it's part of the integration that we will be doing today. So, um, if you take a look at my screen now, you will find uh, a simple store procedure here. So, those of you who are aware with databases should know that this is a very simple So if you take a look at it here, uh, this is how it looks like. It's a simple store procedure. And uh, if you know the code here, just I think a simple read should make you understand the um, simple read of that particular um, store procedure code here. Like if you see here, it says create or replace function total records, return integer as total then you declare a total um, integer then you say count of star into total from pc underscore events so what this does is it gets the total count of star which is like the total number of records from this particular table called as pc underscore events and you we return this total value okay so this is a very, very, very straightforward uh, store procedure. And real time, you're not going to see such a store procedure. But the concept, the concept that we're trying to learn is how to invoke the store procedure. So it doesn't matter um, what our syntax um, that we have. So this store procedure will be written at the database site by probably a TBA. Our requirement is to just invoke the stored procedure okay, from Pega. And for that we will say select right? and then we give just the name total and records. So we just directly call the exact function name like this. Right? So we say select total records and we get the complete function name here. Since so it's it's pretty simple, so what we do, we already have uh, existing database store procedure, which we will actually be writing now in our system, and the database level, like as in how our DBA would be doing. Then we will be invoking the store procedure using this approach, like this. We will say select, and then we just give the right. So yeah, it's pretty straightforward approach um, but we need to know now how we will need to invoke this in the connect SQL rules so you have a, a connect SQL rules similar to what we learned in the last class we have connect hyphen the protocol for connecting with external system so you we learned that we have the connector rule which is useful to talk to the external system and get the um, uh, information from there. So you can have connect hyphen soap, right? Then we can have connect hyphen rest. So similarly, we can have connect hyphen SQL. Right. So these are the different options that are available as part of the connector. So you have connect type in SQL, then you have connect type in REST, then you have connect type in SQL here. Right. So if you see here you have different connect options. You have connect type in SOAP, connect type in REST, and connect type in SQL. So if you carefully observe here, there is a specific syntax that we need to write in order to, we need to have in order to write this connect SQL rule. So in the connect SQL rule, say for example, if you want to select something, if you want to write a simple select query. So you will write select um, with a column name as something, but this is not needed. You can just write column name, comma, next column one, column two, column three. It's all right to write like me. Now what's key here is instead of writing from 
and we hard code normally in real time systems. Uh, I mean, if you were directly writing a simple self query at the database end, you will write select star from or select column name from a table. But in Pega, using connect SQL rule, you will not write a table name directly. Instead, what you will write here is you will write a class colon the class name. So again, the class name can be referenced dynamically from a clipboard page. So you have the clipboard page dot property name. Okay, and then you can give the where condition. Even that can be also from a clipboard page. But the key here is you don't specifically give the class table name directly. Instead, you always tell that this is the particular. So you don't give it. So you say instead of table name, you say the uh, class name. So when you tell the class name, you are internally telling the system, go to the class role form and find what is the table that it is mapped to rather than directly telling the table name. Okay. So there is a specific syntax that we need to follow and this is a syntax that we need to follow in the connect SQL rule. So this is the first example. Now the second example that I can give you here is like you have a delete condition. So if you want to write delete from, again the table name you write class, colon, and you have to find the, give the class name. So here instead of referencing a page uh, or dynamically, I'm just hard coding the class name here. See this is how I'm hard coding the class name. Okay. And where the XMC class is equal to, I'm giving a hard code name here. And access group is equal to something like temp page or PM access group, again a dynamic reference. So the key concept here is how you have we how we have the capability to talk to the external system. Okay, uh, or we can write our own custom um, SQL rule or the SQL code and in the SQL code we can have this class colon um, the actual class name right or a dynamic reference so instead of table we give it like this way right? so this is the standard syntax for writing a connect hyphen SQL rule right so um, yeah so it says uh, it will look through the database table instance and it will find it. And um, yeah, so uh, I think uh, yeah, let's uh, probably just get started uh, with this exercise in a bit after I cover a little bit of uh, theory as well. Okay. Now um, the next thing is how you're going to integrate with the external database. So currently we just saw how you're going to interact with the stored procedure. Okay. Um, yeah, this is right. That's right here. It's just talking about the same PRPC database, not external database. The next option here, we're going to take a look at interacting with the external database. So. Okay, now when you ex uh, interact with the external database, the first thing that you need to create is um, at the at Pega. Um, basically, we have to create uh, in order for this exercise, we have to create a separate database instance in the Postgres at the database level. Okay, so assuming this already exists, and uh, we have to create a separate table as well, um, and this is. I've just created a separate table and a separate database and we are assuming that all this would already exist okay, um, in real time systems. Now the key here is the configuration at Pega end. So here if you see we have to create a new database instance which will be available under the sysadmin category. So if you see if you come here, if you look at this as admin category, you'll find something called as a database here. And you say create. So what, what this does is it creates a new database instance here. And at the database instance here, you have the JDBC definition. 
and here you have to give the exact JDBC URL of uh, the new database instance and you have the, we have the authentication here what is the username and password and after which you have the exact database table as well so a couple of things that we need to do here one is we have to create a new database table database instance itself where you give the JDBC URL then we have to create map the database table to so if you see here we have the database name here as MySQL, which is what we created here. So this is not mega out of the box table database instance. And this is the URL of the new database instance that we have. And this is a sample table inside that particular um, database instance actually. So this is how we will have to integrate with an external database. Right. So when you create it, we have to create all this and we just create it and I think we are good there. Now, uh, how if you want to write a SQL query on the external database, you don't need to do anything explicit. You just need to write from class name and um, we directly get um, the database instance and the table instance from the uh, external record that we do here. Right. Okay, that is uh, how you interact with the external database. Um, any questions here? It, it's a pretty straightforward configuration. We will be doing the exercise of all this in a bit. Uh, now I'm just explaining the theory to you. Right. Now the next thing to do for us is uh, we're going to talk about um, security and access groups. So we're going to talk a bit about authentication. So let's say here, put the exercise here. So our requirement here is we are, we are framing the requirement for the authentication. So the authentication here is only operators with certain privilege can create the claim insurance right? case. That is one exercise. The other exercise that we can give is only operators with certain privilege can run the reports in the report we created earlier If you, now, okay. Now, before we get into that, let's try to understand a bit about operator ID and access group, and um, what access you have towards each class in Pega. Right. So, if you see here, we have something called the operator ID one. Um, say you have first operator ID, you have with multiple operator IDs. All of them can point to one single access group. So this is like many to one. So you have like one, and then you have all this map to just one access group. Okay. So you have something called as many, many to one mapping here for the operator ID towards the access group. Okay. Now the access group has a one to one mapping towards the application. So you have like three things now, you have operator ID, then you have something called as an access group, okay, which is then mapped to an application. Okay. And this access group is also mapped to another thing called as a role, 
which is also called as um, axis of roll to object. So you can call it ARO. Okay. So this the the axis of roll to object will actually define separate entities uh, for each object. Say, for example, in Pega, the security is given by virtue of uh, um, two things. The first thing here being um, an operator who is on uh, uh, um, yeah. So you can say that um, you can have based on the classes we can give a privilege. So if you remember in the initial session, we had done the security for attachment, and we had seen that for each class in Pega, we could have a privilege like whether you are able to open, you can uh, modify the instance or delete the instance or even create the instance and all this. So those are all defined at the class level. Okay, so the access, the each of the objects will be there, like which is actually in, in effect the class instance, and you will write whether you can be able to open, modify, delete, or something like that. And you can have here the access can be from zero to five. So when I say zero, it's no access. Five means access up to production. Okay, so now if you see here. Um, yeah, so here these are the instances here you can have a separate, this is the axis of roll to object, this is how you'll have the syntax for ARO, you have C claim process and colon, colon app name, uh, so we can give uh, access of roll to object saying that do not give access to C claim and do not give access to any three more options in that. All right. Now this is key here. Now what we will do next is we will have something higher. So this is how it would look as well. So hold on. Let's zoom in here. So if you see here the operator is mapped to the access group, okay, which is mapped to the application, which is also mapped to the Role. Now the role itself is also referenced by access of role to object, which in turn says that okay for this class, this is the access that I have, and we can see here on that particular class role form here. You can see here this is how we give the class name here, and then we have all the privileges. So we say read instance, write instance, and delete instance. Okay, so or I say read rules, write rules, or execute reports, or read rules, and things like that. So essentially, what we have is we are even associating privilege as well. So privilege is nothing but a token, and using the token, we can just say whether if that person has a privilege, then we can say that uh, okay, use it. Otherwise, um, we won't get that privilege. Right, so that uh, sums up how we have uh, authentication in the application. Um, now, these are two things, two important things. One is to go f uh, how we want to interact uh, a call a store procedure from Vega, and the other is you going to interact with the external database and after which we will do the exercise on authentication. Okay. All right, so um, let's uh, get started with the exercise here. Um, give me a second.
Right, so let's get started with the exercise. So the first exercise that we will be doing in today's session is um, on, as I was talking to you earlier, uh, we will create the stored procedure of the application um, in the database, at the database end, which is generally to be done by the DBA. So for this, you need to first go to your installation folder where you've installed PRPC Person Edition and then what we're going to do is we're going to open this folder called as PGSQL and then from within that pen I want to say should be yeah so this is the standard um, PG admin 3 which is the IDE for Postgres so you double click on this Right. And then you have this option colors. Uh, you just give this plug icon, and then I say pega, and I say host is local host. So generally, the port is five four three two, unless you have specifically changed it. So if you want to be sure, what is your port number? For that, you can go to your uh, Tomcat. Then you go to the configuration and then you go to context.xml and you see edit with notepad plus. And here you can find the exact port number here. So you see this is a URL, JDBC URL. And here my port number is 5719. Okay. So, so I'll minimize this. And I'll give the port number here as 5719. And the username is Pega and password is rules. And that is also available here actually. So if you see here, this is the username. And password is uh, not rules, it's Pega. Right, I click OK and say I'll show the center key and I say OK. It's our journey lesson. So, I think uh, let's take a look at it here. Ah, okay. I think I'm not looking at the right installation folder. I have like two installation folders. So, hold on. I think my applications. Uh, right. Yeah, this is my other installation folder. So I have, I have two pair instances running in my system. And I think I happened to look at the wrong one. Um, so yeah. But um, for you, if you just have only one, just uh, what we did right now should be right. So if you see here, this the port here is 5711, right? So you see here the port, 5711. And Run and I think we we'll click OK. Yeah, so it is connected to the database. Now there is a bug with this PG admin tree. So if you ha add a new connection, you have to close it and then reopen it again. So we come back to So we come back to that PGSQL again, we put a little bin and then we open it here again with PGML3. Yeah, so yeah, now it shows up here on this list. So you double click on this again and then you see here you already have a database here under Pega. So and then if you expand schema generally uh, all your personal edition installation will be under the schema called as personal edition. 
So why I'm saying that is because if you, um, I think, um, yeah, we've defined it at another place, but key here is to understand, you see the tables here? There are 198 tables by default on the application. See, this is a list of, so if you see here, this is our work class. And uh, we see AIG claim one prop work, which is where we have all our mega application, mega uh, work object data. All right. Now what's key for us is we will create a new store procedure here. So what I will do, I will right click over this and I will say or, or even better I will just write a new SQL query here like this and I will just execute this query there. And just remove the double quotes. Okay, so it's created successfully. And now if you take a look at it here, we'll first this mm, right, I think under personal edition. Okay, so here we have the functions here. So here the function is created total records. This is the one we just is it, we just currently run on the system. So keep in mind that we had explicitly stated in the SQL query the schema name as personal edition. Right? So when you run it at your end also, please make sure you do this. Alright, now it, from now from um, the database here on the query, we can just execute the simple um, we will run, we have created the stored procedure. To invoke the stored procedure, you just need this syntax now. Just select and the stored procedure name. So let's just run that and let's see what is the result we get. The same result is what we ought to get in Pega as well. You see here, so we are getting a result as 22. Okay. Now, then what you need to do here is, so, so at the database end, we've all set it up and it's all good. Okay. Now the next job for us is to create the connect SQL rule at Pega end. So for this, we will go into a particular case here. So the work class, and we say integration connectors, and we will write a connect SQL here. You get total calls. Let's say applies to classes, say AIG claim. Say I keep it at the work level. And then one key thing about um, connect SQL rules is um, you have the option to have an additional parameter called as package name which can help you group multiple um, connect SQL rules. So say, for example, a good way to group that is um, to mention what is the right um, package. Uh, say you can have a package for one of the crude operations, like create. Okay. So here we can just say the package is like get info. Or sometimes even people give um, a package name as the uh, database name as well. So if you now just let's open an existing um, connect SQL rule here. You see here the package name is like SLA and then you see here people give it as Microsoft SQL Server, um, update account 
a um, lot of options that are available. Right? So what we can do here under this one here, we can view the package name as yeah, get info. And say create and open. And you see here on the connect SQL rules, we have uh, multiple options. You have the option to open, case, delete, save, browse, error, and history. So these are the different options that are available on a connect SQL rule that is key for you to understand. Now if you see here, an open SQL rule will give this option here. So this is a way of writing a select uh, rule select class, so you can say select um, all these information from a clipboard page or um, this is an open option. Now we can have a delete option and here you can write the delete query. So I can just simply write this, I can just copy this delete option here. Right, so, so I just say, um, yeah, I just mentioned the information here and it should be good. So I don't give anything on the temp page just for now. Right. And now for browse, I can write the the simple store procedure call. Okay, select total records. So this is when you're expected to get more than one entry. Open is when you want to open one record. Delete is when you want to delete it. Uh, save, obviously to save it. Browse is when you can, you want to open more than one record. Okay, it is similar to open, but just that it can, you're expecting more than one record in browse. Right, so that is what you have here under the uh, browse option. Let's see. Let me click save. And now how to get this is you go to the App Explorer and you go to the work. Now how to invoke this connect SQL rule is from a store proceed uh, from an activity. So an activity method called as RDB methods. So you create a new activity and here I will give a name as um, invoke um, give invoke stroke procedure. Okay. And then here what I will do is rdb hyphen browse. So the moment I say RDB hyphen or I say RDB hyphen list because RDB doesn't have, when I say RDB list it automatically points to this connected to this browse tab okay so I will just say RDB hyphen list and then here I will say what is the request type access and class name now key here is uh, if you look at it here. You see this is this is a package name and the other is a request type. So the request type was called as get total records. That's actually the name. Right. Now if you look at this, there is something called as an access tab. So let's see what that is. It it means the package name. Okay. So but as I was telling you, generally you have to you are expected to give the database names here because sometimes systems may have some uh, installations may have interactions with multiple DBs. So say for example you're building a framework and you don't know your implementation will be on which kind of a database. So you have to give the name of the DBs like this here. But here we have given something because we know that we are always going to be on the Pega, on this Pega application. I give it as get info. 
No. Now what is the class name is let's say H N Train one frog walk. Okay. Now again here if we take a look at the help here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can have uh, you can have uh, browse page which is which may hold the information of the result of our query so we can just create a new page before this so I will do a page name first and I will create the page right so Say SP store procedure. We'll define it in the pages and classes. And so, um, yep, so uh, we have mention it here and we can save. Uh -huh. I don't know why this just disappeared. So I will write it again here. Get total records. Um, as a matter of fact, this name, this browse SQL, the stored procedure may not come specifically under browse. It can even come under open as well. Right. So the request type is called as get total records. Now the access is called as get info. something this had explained it right now so the difference between browse and open is that open you are expected to get one single record entry you will open that particular record browse is when you are going to uh, scan over a set of records so if you do browse you are expected to get multiple responses multiple results and uh, open is just going to give you just one record right that's the difference between open and browse it's the same thing just that browse will fetch you multiple entries whereas uh, open is just going to get you just that particular entry alone all right now let's come here and let's execute this one Let's trace this. So when you trace it, if you want to see how what is a DB query that's being executed, you can mention on the under event types you can check box DB cache and DB query, and that should let you trace um, <coughs> the existing um, DB calls. I click run and say success and if you see here it executed the stored procedure let's see here it says a uh, list using a list spec and you see here at the SQL here you just click over this one and you can see the actual SQL being executed which is the total records that we wanted right so and let's see here run record primary page and now let's open the clipboard here to take a look at the SP page 
procedure is created on SP as a store procedure and it gives you um, see the result count is just one and let's see here and you see here it is given the total records here right now although we have not created this property system has created this property called as total records and map the results to that um, but if you do, if you have, because we've used uh, the store procedure um, in the browse option, that is why the result of this store this page is in page results. Now, say for example, I don't use RDB list. Okay, instead the same query, I'm going to put it under the open option here okay because uh, as a result of the store procedure I just need one res response so I don't essentially need to go and use a browse option so in order to invoke that I just need to I will comment out this step I'll add a new step called as db hyphen right. And here I will just I will give let's say the class is work class and then the request type is get total records, copy this. And then the access name is called as get info. Right. Now we run it on this page. So here I mentioned this on top of this step page here. Save this. And we'll open all close all these existing windows. Now what I will do is I will run this again. And I will trace it. Right, so here again I didn't set it. I think that's what the settings. See the DB cache DB query is not there, that's why I didn't trace it exactly. But we have the store procedure now. Let's click on this and you see here again we have the total records retrieved here. So when you want to fetch multiple records, then we can use a store procedure. So let's, um, uh, sorry, when you want to fetch multiple records, you can use a RDB list. So here I can, we can write another query here, like this one. So I'll just copy this query here. It's all in your class notes. And I will say from class or so what I will do here is I will just get select PZ INS key alone okay, from and I will give the class name as you know, our or I'll just do, use a dynamic reference just to make it a bit more complicated. So I will say sp dot label, okay, where the x object class is equal to sp dot label. Now on the store procedure activity here, I'll write one. Right. And here, before we invoke the RDB list, I will say property hyphen list, and now property hyphen set. We will create one more page like result page because one of them here is for the input. Let's say results. Uh, 
this is still looking for a port regardless instance. And here under the steps, I will set the value for let's say top p value and then I will give the property value here as right so you set the property value and then now on the RDB list and the browse page we will just put it as the results here alright so now we should be able to fetch some information from there. So say run phrase. Go for the settings here. I will ensure DB cache and DB query is checked. And say run. Ha. Huh. Got an error. And let's see here. Uh, what is the error that it says? It's position 20. It says there was a problem getting a list. Right. So let's look at the query here. It says, yeah, this is the query that it has run. Uh, you see there is an additional comma here, which we missed. Um, because there were some other, yeah, and I'll delete this right. But if you see here, this error doesn't make, uh, doesn't, it's not at all clear for you to understand that there was a comma and that was causing the problem. So in those scenarios, it's really important that you understand uh, how to run the tracer. So let's run this all over again. Let's click on run. I hmm. think uh, we might have one more error. Oh, okay. I think is the uh, SQL query still pointing to? No, it's now fine. Okay, I think this double quotes is the problem here. I think there's like two double quotes there. Yeah, well, this is not a problem. Let's see here. So we save this. And now we will run it again. Play and we come here and we say run. Yep, so it's success now. Now if you take a look at it here, you will find the SQL query. I think it is return the result with zero rows which says that there are um, no entries. So let's run this in our Pega application because uh, ideally the class name can never be um, because this is a work pool so generally the px obj class for our work objects will be either c claim or l claim or something like that so let's modify this a bit more so we'll say c claim right. and now run it again to get the result I click clear and I click play. So run. Right, so we have now if you see here we've got the result count here. It says 49. Now you click on SQL and then we have here select and then we have the C claim here. So we've got and if you open the clipboard from here we've got a page called as results so here is the results page expand this one here you have all the results entities here and we have the property called as bx minus handle so you see here this is how you do a rdb browse right, so something that's all um, 
Now let's now try to map the C claim to, let's look at where the C claim is currently mapped to, I think. Um, if you look at the SQL query as well here, you can see the exact table that it is mapped to. The table here being BC AIG claim one proc work. Okay, so one process work. So we can map it. How to see that is you just right click on the case and you click on definition. And then you click on test connection here. This should tell you what table it is mapped. Now we will change this to map it to an external database instance. So for that, before we do it, we have to create the external database instance in our BC admin. So the steps for that is as in the second step here. Now even before I go into that, like you see there is a delete option and the delete is just fired this way. But uh, when you call it from the activity, you just say RDB hyphen delete and you put the query under the delete tab of the uh, SQL. Now let's create uh, a separate DB at um, the system. And so for that we just come here again go to the query tab and paste it here. Say create database and just say pega db underscore one and take it like this. So if you're creating a separate db and this is the way to do it. Let's say square is still running. Right, so we just created it now. Now what we need to do here is we have to create a sample table in that DB. So if you, let's see whether it is created in a separate database. Currently PCA you see databases of two. We refresh this and you see now we have DBs of Pega DB database of three and this is the DB. So by default the schema is public schema. Now we click on uh, we create a new SQL query here. Can keep, keep in mind that this is to be run on Pega DB and score one. And then we execute this one here. So we're going to create a, something called a sample table. Sorry. Let me execute this one here. So it created a sample table and with the primary key called AID sample table dot primary key. Okay. Now at Pega end, how we're going to map this is by virtue of going to sysadmin and then we create a database table instance or even a database instance first actually. So I say my TB and then I say my TB here. This is or just to be in sync with the query that we have here in the system I say my SQL the, the pictorial representation. Now I will just say use JDBC URL listed below and the URL again you can find that on your um, local Tomcat configuration here. So just copy this and you put the URL here. Now the username is again Pega and Pega that's the password. I think that's the same as admin as well. Right, you click save and then you say test connection. Right, it's fully connected. Now we create a new database table instance or we view the existing database table instances for our work class. Okay, so I just say IGI and let's see. This is our work class here. Right. 
the default is here it's mapped to bigger data and this is a class so just copy this in into a notepad or something so that after the exercise you can remove it yeah when you can restore it now the database here you will give it as mysql the table name is what we created so let's look at the table name that we created is sample table now if we were to run a simple query here select star from sample table on the database you will see zero records there are no entries here okay now we've mapped the work pool in our work our main work pool to that and let's create a new case oops what is that Hmm. Let's create the case. Let's see hmm. if it's all right. Let's just create the case for us. No. So you we'll go to our case here and let's see. Let's see. Think. Or, or let's run a new life insurance claim here. Say run. Um, okay, hold on. This is some other error which is not allowing me. Let's look at the error like you yeah, make this is an opportunity for you to understand how to see the stack trace. So generally whenever you have an error, um, uh -huh. so if you see here, it says um, if you carefully observe this error here, it's because of the change that we made now. It says problem flow about due to uh, non-existent table exception. So basically, Pega was trying to hit the particular database table, and it says personal addition dot sample table. Mm, so let's see here. Why is it referencing personal addition dot sample table? where in effect we are pointing to public dot sample table which is in our in our new um, schema right so let's come here to this one and i think the schema name needs to be given here as public so the schema for this is you see here on this one, schema is public schema. It's here, it says public. And because we have not given anything, I thought it would automatically take it. We can give public here. And let's click on test connectivity just to see if it is high. You see here, it says public dot sample table. It is not able to map it. That is the reason we are getting that error. Let's see what's the problem is mapped to table public dot sample table database mysql let's open this mysql first let's cross it again it says that it's going to be fine and now what we do here is we come here to this particular public dot sample table hmm. so let's just um, trace it and see what's the problem here when we click on test connection so go to the settings and you enable db cache db query let's see the exact query the system is trying to hit say test connectivity and oops not this one Say okay. This is the call that it's making, and see it says um, test connection. Mm, 
So basically, when you click on that button, it just goes and tries to. So it does an OBJ open um, step end, and we says the test connection. So if you open this activity here, call this test connection. Activity being rule life and OBJ class test class connection. So we just open. And I think this is all the configuration that we need. Yeah, there's always a caching problem for a new DB connection. This keeps happening all the time. So you see here it says open the class, it creates it, and then this is the call. And then the other Java step to make the actual test. It says um, it tries to validate the class connection. But um, I think um, yeah, this is this is the configuration is all right. I think there is always a caching problem for this, so we can just log out and log in. And let's come back to this database instance here, MySQL. Click save. Okay. Right. Let's see connection. We're good. And now if you go to the database table instance here, you say it is MySQL. And we click save. And we click test connectivity. Let's see here. Uh -huh. See here this doesn't work again. Um, but I think this might get resolved if you do if you clean the system and restart again. So I will do that today and probably show it to you in the next class. But um, this is all the configuration that is there. Um, and once it runs fine, you will be able to see the entries on this particular table. Okay, they will be mapped to the new database table. But the configuration is all right. And this always happens in real-time systems as well. Um, even though you map to the right database table, sometimes it just there is a severe caching problem in Pega for this, so uh, just um, yeah, just look out for that, right? Okay, so let's meet up tomorrow at the same time, and uh, tomorrow we will do the exercise on authentication. Uh, all right, everyone, thank you for your time. If there are any doubts, please uh, type it in. Otherwise, just drop me a mail. Okay. All right. Good day, everyone. Thanks for your time.